like to start by thanking Dr. Krishnan and Dr. Ferris for the invite to this prestigious and clearly well-attended uh, meeting. I am honored to be part of the faculty. I was asked this morning to discuss popliteal artery aneurysms, uh, endovascular open approach, what is the evidence, and which one is better than the other. Popliteal artery aneurysms are the most common peripheral artery aneurysm. And while they rarely rupture, they do present with acute or chronic ischemia secondary to embolization or thrombosis, as is seen by the yellow hours in the example on the right. To understand why we treat popliteal artery aneurysms, you do have to look at the natural history. And Dawson looked at 71 popliteal artery aneurysms, 25 of which were observed and not treated. Of those, 57% of the asymptomatic and 50% of the symptomatic aneurysms had lower extremity complications. When you waited out five years, that increased to 74%. Similarly, Szilagyi looked at a natural history study and found that at five years, only 32% of the non-treated uh, popliteal artery aneurysms remained without lower extremity complications at five years. So in general, we do tend to treat popliteal artery aneurysms that are greater than two centimeters as these aneurysms carry a 30 to 40 percent risk of ischemia and with that there is a high rate of limb loss. We also tend to treat all symptomatic patients. Now endovascular repair of popliteal artery aneurysms has arisen as an alternative to open repair and popularized by our vice president years ago, Dick Cheney. But I do have to mention it still is an off-label use and is not FDA approved and there really is no billing code for endovascular repair of popliteal artery aneurysms. In 2012, we published in JBS our uh, experience, a review from 2004 to 2011. Uh, it was 26 popliteal artery aneurysms, mean age around 75, mean diameter was just under three centimeters, and a little over half were asymptomatic. We have and do have pretty strict anatomic selection criteria, and I think that is a key to having successful popliteal artery uh, aneurysm repairs. Uh, they should have at least two centimeter landing zones, being able to oversize 10 to 15 percent of the luminal diameter. They should have minimal discrepancy between the proximal and distal landing zones, so that if you use more than one graft size, there should really only be a one millimeter difference between graft sizes. And if you use more than one graft, there should be at least two to three centimeter overlap. And the aneurysm should not have extreme tortuosity. Exclusion criteria were really carpenters and gardeners and people that constantly had their knee flexed greater than 90% uh, as seen in the picture on the right for fear of kinking of, and occlusion of the graft. We also exclude patients who have a contraindication to antiplatelet medication as Plavix has been shown to be a predictor of success of endovascular repair of popliteal artery aneurysms. This is a typical case and an angiogram. This is a fairly straightforward one. We do check our, our um, intraluminal diameters on angiography. This is the graft in place, post dilatation, and the completion angiogram. Now on almost all popliteal artery aneurysm repairs, we do a completion with the knee bent to make sure there is no kinking, and we really try to make sure the graft is not ended right on the kink. It is important to note here that that bend is usually at least five or more centimeters from the actual knee joint. Uh, our technical success rate was 96%. I will show you the one failure. Length of stay was fairly uh, short of 2.4 days. Follow-up was just under two years, and all patients were on aspirin and or Plavix. Our primary patency, including that one intraoperative uh, uh, failure, was 91% at one year and 86% at two years, with a secondary patency rate of 91% at one and two years, and there were no cases of limb loss. This is our one intraoperative failure, and it was due to excessive oversizing, and a um, patient ended up with a femoral uh, to popliteal artery bypass, and you can see the kinking on the graft in the picture in the postoperative CAT scan. They've since uh, repackaged the graft differently, and this is rare, but it can happen with excessive oversizing. We had three occlusions during follow-up at 4, 14, and 26 months. One patient required a tibial bypass for a non-healing wound, and two patients went uh, successful thrombectomy. All occlusion patients of note did have single vessel runoff, and the only predictor of stent graft occlusion was poor runoff with a significant p-value. <clears throat> 
not published yet, but we're in the process of writing up our experience of endovascular versus open popliteal artery aneurysm repair. There were 79 popliteal artery aneurysms between uh, 1998 and 2012. 36 were repaired open, 43 were repaired via an endovascular route. The cohorts were very similar with age comorbidities, aneurysm size, runoff, and symptoms. Uh, the follow-up, however, on the open repair, as we've been doing it for much longer, was uh, much longer. Uh, patent, primary patency rates were actually slightly better for endovascular repair, but it was, did not reach statistical significance. Uh, secondary patency was equal at 90% in both groups at five years. Our length of stay, as would be expected, was shorter for endovascular repair. There was one amputation in the open group. Uh, and again, like our prior study, single vessel or poor runoff did predict uh, occlusion. <clears throat> Other studies have come out. If we want to look at the literature, Mohan looked at uh, 30 popliteal artery aneurysms and found three-year primary and secondary pat patency rates at 75 and 83%. And his conclusion was that the patency rates of endovascular repair are similar to that of open surgery. Tilio looked at 73 popliteal artery aneurysm uh, repairs. Five-year primary and secondary patency were 70% and 76%. And he noted that that primary patency at five years increased to 80% with surgeon experience and with the addition of plavix. Jung looked at 15 popliteal artery uh, aneurysms, endovascular, with a fairly long 54-month follow-up. They had primary and secondary, secondary patency rates of 85 and 100%, with an 86% amputation-free overall survival. Antonello published one of the few prospective randomized trials on open versus endovascular repair, and they found no difference in limb salvage and patency rates at four years and they did find a decreased operative time and length of stay for endovascular repair. Saunders did a review of 34 popliteal artery aneurysms, found five-year primary and secondary patency rates at 82 and 86 percent, with an amputation-free survival at 94 percent, and the conclusions at the paper was that endovascular repair was actually slightly better than open uh, based on limb salvage and re-intervention rates. Lovegrove looked at a large meta-analysis of open versus endovascular pair and found no difference in long-term patency. For endovascular, like others, there was decreased operative time and length of stay, and they found that endovascular pair was actually more likely to have thrombosis or reintervention within 30 days. Curie looked at 56 percent, uh, I'm sorry, 56 popliteal artery aneurysms, open versus endo. It was a retrospective review and found no difference in primary, secondary patency rates or survival. Uh, two studies looked at multi-layer stents for the treatment of popliteal artery aneurysm repairs. Thacker looked at six popliteal artery aneurysm repairs. Uh, they had a very high 50 percent occlusion rate at six months. And Antonu looked at uh, six popliteal artery aneurysm repairs and noted two occlusions at nine months. So it does not seem that multilayer stents is the answer to treating popliteal artery aneurysms. So in conclusion, I do think that endovascular repair of popliteal artery aneurysms is relatively safe with patency and limb salvage rates in the literature that are comparable to open repair, but it is important you, that the patients have appropriate anatomy. <clears throat> Endovascular repair in multiple studies have been shown to have a decreased length of stay and procedure time. And based on our own data, I would urge caution in patients uh, with poor runoff. Uh, Plavix does seem to increase the patency rates. And at least as of now, we still do wait for FDA approval uh, for endovascular repair of popliteal artery aneurysms. I thank you again for the opportunity to present this morning.